Hey, it's Daryl Sims, and in today's video, I'm going to be giving you a little bit of insight into one of Matthias Asato's song ideas named The Breakup Song, which is a really beautiful piece, which I can't wait to show you. And in this video, you're not only going to be able to learn that piece, but I'm also going to be giving you my interpretation on the compositional aspect, as well as some of the chord theory, and hopefully begin to enlighten you on why this piece of music sounds freaking awesome in hopes that you can take some of these ideas and implement them into your own playing. As usual, the tab for this song is available on my Patreon feed among much more awesome and useful content. If you're interested in checking that out, then please visit the link in the description below, where you'll also find a link to my website, which has heaps more of my own instructional content. And relevant to this video, you might find my Essential Theory for Guitarists course useful to help develop your theory and understanding of these principles a lot deeper. And once again, with the goal to implement all of this stuff into your own playing. And with all of that stuff said, let's crack on with the video. Now there's just a handful of things that I wanna mention before we crack on with the main body of the song, and that's that you're gonna to wanna to use your bridge pickup for this entire piece. And we start off by fading in this chord. That's an E major nine. We've got the root here, which is the open E of course, and then the second or the ninth degree on the D string, followed by the fifth and then the seventh. You can also see that as a B major triad with an E on the bass, whatever works for you. But as I mentioned, we're going to fade that in, so roll the volume pot off entirely, play it, and then gradually introduce that beautiful tone. This chord also is going to represent the tonal center for this entire piece, which I'll elaborate on shortly. After that, we have the following lick. Which is very cool, very beautiful. I'm going to play that super slow for you and hopefully I don't need to elaborate on it too much. Use your eyes and your ears to see what's going on here. So we start off with a hit. Alright. When I play that E at the end, that represents the first note of the chord sequence, which of course starts with that E major 9. I'm going to play up to speed for you, at least the first four bars to begin with, and then I'll explain what chords are being used and the chord voicings, and then I'll play it slow for you to follow along, and then lastly I'll go through any other noteworthy things I think will be necessary to share in order for you to gain a deeper understanding of what's actually going on here in hopes that you can take some of these ideas away and implement them into your own compositions. So here we go, up to speed, four bars at a time. So let me talk about the chords that are being used here. Of course we start off with the E major 9 shape, and then we've got a very simple F sharp major triad, so it's a closed position in the middle there with your thumb wrapped around the top, followed by a G sharp minor 9 or a G sharp minor add 9. We've got the third finger at the top here, this is a little bit awkward to finger. Your first finger is going to stretch all the way to that first fret on the D string. And then second finger, third fret on the G, that's your ninth degree there. And then your open B, which is your minor third. And you're going to need to finger it like that because we need that little finger available for the embellishment that connects that chord to the next chord, which is... So that's uh, 6, 4, 6, 0 middle four strings. And that chord could be the blah, 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 blah. <laughs> that chord could be interpreted in two different ways. It could either be a D sharp minor seven or it could possibly be a first inversion triad of B major. Which by the way is the parent major key of all of this. But reflecting the tonality of each of the chords and the progression, we're actually in the key of G sharp minor. So we've got an ascending progression here, essentially. We've got uh, E major, your sixth chord, into your seven, into your one, and then into your, uh, if you see this is the B major, this would be your three. 
So now I'm gonna go ahead and play those four bars super slow for you to follow along. And once again, hopefully I don't need to elaborate on this too much. I want you to use your eyes and your ears to see what's going on. So starting off with your E major nine. There we go. If you need to rewind the video and play that back again, then do so before moving on to the next part. Don't forget to watch out for the right hand when playing this. It's not just about the notes that are being played, but it's also, of course, how you play them. Now, just a quick side note, when I learn songs like this and I try to search for a deeper meaning of how they're composed into what they are, I always look out for the main melody and the bass notes. So the bass notes, of course, are this ascending, the 6 to the 7 to the 1 to the 3 in G sharp minor. And the melody is actually descending. We go from on the B string here, 4th fret to 2nd fret to 0. And then we stay on 0 for the 3 chord as well which is just a little interesting observation. But that changes for the second four bars because the voicings for the chords are actually very simple and I think Matthias tries to focus a little bit more on the melody for these four bars. So once again, I'm gonna play the next four up to speed before slowing it down and elaborating on what's going on. So, the chords used for these four bars are very simple. We start off with two power chords, just an E power chord, into an F sharp power chord, followed by this G sharp minor nine again, but a slightly different voicing. You've got your root, your minor third, your minor seven, your ninth, and then your minor third. And then lastly, we have this little embellishment really at the end which doesn't necessarily highlight a chord but I think the most noteworthy thing to bear in mind here is that the progression is still ascending again if you look at the root notes we've obviously got your E F sharp G and then these two here before the next section of the song so let me slow all of this down with all of those embellishments again I'm just gonna play rather than say here we go So there we go. The only thing I really want to mention really is for the first chord, if we slide up to seven, hammer on the nine to keep the sustain, and then descend to the four. And then the rest should be fairly easy for you to follow along. I'll slow down the last embellishment again. Got two fours there on the A and the D. A real quick hammer onto the six and pull off. Finishing on that seven on the top. And then that leads us nicely onto the next four bars, which again, I'll play fast. So here we go. So there we have it. So rather than break down the chords at hand here, I'm gonna do that as I go along whilst breaking this down slowly for you. So we start off with this ascending pattern of sixths. So we've got a hammer on there, seven to nine on the B string whilst holding the nine on the D. And then this is the second one. And then the same thing up here with the hammer on before sliding down to the 11. And these are all six, the distance between the two notes are all six. And this is a wonderful thing to do to make a melody sound a lot more interesting. So rather than we've got, so that's a nice easy thing to do when trying to make a melody more full, if you like. And those last two notes, when we slide down from 
This brings us real nicely into the next chord in the progression, which once again ascends. We've gone from E to F sharp. So these two notes fit real nicely into F sharp major, which sounds like this. Nice and easy there, there's not really much elaboration necessary, I'll just play it super slow for you. And then that leads into our next bar, which is super short and simple there. We keep our little finger where it is, we wrap our thumb around to that D sharp at the top, and our first finger is on the 11 of the G, and we just go one, two, three, four. And that represents a D sharp minor chord, which is a five chord in the key of G sharp minor, which you might think naturally would possibly resolve to the one chord, but actually in this instance, because I mentioned at the beginning, E is our tonal center for this piece, five actually resolves really nicely to that E, which also has a tonic function in the key of G sharp minor. If you don't know what I mean by chord functions, I definitely recommend that you check out my video called Why Progressions Progress. Now after this D sharp, we have... So that's just a really nice melody there that I'll slow down for you from... Keep your first there, take everything else off. So that concludes those four bars. There's not too much to say apart from what I've mentioned so far. Let's now move on to the next four bars, which are almost exactly the same. It's just a slightly different ending. So, as you can see, it starts off exactly the same. I'll go through it and play it slowly until the point that needs more attention. Here we go. So I buy that little finger, let go at the top, keep your little finger where it is. That's the melody right there. So you just want a little bend in that 15. And that's where we finish before moving on to the next four bars, which are exactly the same as we've previously done. We're going to repeat both of those previous eight bars again. So we'd have... Before the next four bars, which has a slight change to it. So let me slow that down for you. We have our thumb over the top on the ninth fret, first finger on the G string, hammering onto the 11 on the G. Get that whammy ready, just pull it up slightly. So that's just an octave sequence at the end there. And by the way, if you don't have a whammy at hand, you can do all of this without just by doing the quick slide technique, which I've done a video on before if you haven't seen that yet. It sounds like this. So notice I just go in for some quick slides. Sounds very similar to if you were to use the whammy. Now in that section, we go between two chords, which are C sharp minor into E, okay? So that's your four chord into your six chord before leading us back into what seems to be the main melody or the chorus. So there's a 
a slightly different ending there. Everything is the same until that G sharp minor. We have seventh degree, your second degree, your minor third, and then your seventh again at the bottom, and then your thumb needs to be on that root note. And the order of the notes are quite important here. We're gonna go E, D, G, E, finishing on that B. And if you can, just give it a little, little wiggle at the end with that whammy bar. So there you have the whole piece. Hopefully you've managed to take all of that in. But the main takeaway from this video really is not just to learn this piece of music, but I really wanna give you a deeper insight into what's going on and why this sounds so awesome. And hopefully I've began to give you a bit of insight into that because ultimately it's these things that are gonna help you implement these ideas into your own playing. So to summarize some of the key things that are going on with the chorus, the main melody, we have an ascending progression from six to seven to one to three. And then for the middle part, it was quite interesting to see how Matthias follows the chord changes. This was particularly obvious for things like this, where these two notes exist in the F sharp, which is the next chord in the progression. And then even after this, this note here is included in the voicing for the next chord in the progression, which naturally occurs. That's a D sharp minor seven. That's your minor seven there, which is the naturally occurring note. And then again, even for the last chord, when we go like this, we're hammering on to that major third, which is a nice way to release the tension of that dissonant suspend second and then once again coming back in we're hammering on to the same major third so when practicing this piece i want you to look out for that try and figure out essentially why each note has its place because it really does there you have it. I hope you managed to follow along and take some things away from this video. If you happen to post a video of you playing this on Instagram, please tag me at Daryl Sims. I would love to see you play it. And if you have any questions or comments, of course, please do let us know in the comments section below. That's all from me today. I will see you in the next video.